we built our log house three years ago and uh, when we were looking for a site to build the house we found this fairly remote location uh, one of the problems with it was that we had no power or water supplied so when we were designing the house we had to think of a way to provide the power that we needed um, the obvious way was through uh, photovoltaic panels for power and solar thermal for hot water so that was built into the house as we designed it uh, we also installed a small wind turbine because again the remote location um, we get a lot of wind where we are um, the initial cost of getting onto the grid was a major factor on us deciding to do this in the first place because it was far too expensive um, but since then we've benefited from having control over our own uh, outputs and inputs and we receive a feeding tariff from the government which is helpful and we also have a, a pellet boiler which provides the heat for the underfloor heating and the uh, domestic hot water. Being remote like this having our own system like this is, is, is really good and we've found it beneficial. Um, because of the systems we've got in the house uh, we can go and have a look at what we've got in there now and give you more detail on what's involved in there. Here at Long Rig we have uh, two sets of photovoltaic panels. Uh, the initial set along the top row is a 1.7 kilowatt system and that was installed when the house was built three years ago. Uh, because of the um, efficiency of the system since we've been in the house we then installed the second set of panels uh, which is a 2.4 kilowatt system um, and that has increased the output from both systems. The, uh, the lowest panels are a lot more efficient than new ones um, but overall the, the panels are all we need for electricity during the, the summer months. And on to the two thermal solar panels we have they are enough for hot water through the summer months again um, we don't need any boilers on um, to heat the hot water um, unless it's a great day. We then have the small wind turbine which is a one kilowatt turbine uh, that is in for trickle charging the batteries uh, for use during the evening or, or the winter when it's, the sun's not up to its peak uh, it's good for keeping the batteries nice and level um, then everything is fed into the inverter room Okay, so we're now in the inverter room, and this is the main room, which is outside the house in a separate building. Uh, the main inverter here controls the power into and out of the house. Uh, there are two inverters in the house which take care of the power from the solar panels. The power then comes into here and then into the batteries. We also have the wind turbine controller here as well. Um, they are um, fed into the battery with from the power. However, when the batteries are full, uh, the inverter reads that and the solar panels are then told through a change in frequency into the house that the inverters then reduce the power being produced by the solar panels. So that stops the batteries becoming overcharged. The same happens for the wind turbine. If the wind is still producing and the batteries are full, the power has to go somewhere. It goes through basically a one kilowatt bar fire and that takes the power from the wind turbine um, to stop the batteries from overcharging. On the other side of the coin we have the, the position where the batteries drop to a level where they need charge, they're not receiving solar panel type power, they're not receiving wind power so they need power from a generator which we have as a standby. The inverter will read the battery charge if it drops below 40% the generator will kick in and that will run for as long as the inverter tells it to. Once the battery charges are up to about 85-90% the inverter will then tell the generator to turn off and that's it. It's basically it's all automated and we don't need, other than keeping our eyes on the battery fluid levels, uh, there is basically no uh, maintenance. Okay so these are the two inverters for the two sets of uh, photovoltaic panels that we have on the roof. Um, 
This is the, the more recent system, the 2.4 kilowatt system, and this is the 1.7 kilowatt system, which was initially installed when the house was built. The power comes in from the panels at the top, comes into the um, inverters, and then it comes out through the bus bars into the main circuit board. Um, each set of panels has its own uh, meter for feeding tariffs, which is here and here. And these are the, the meters that we use to send back to get our feeding tariffs. So we also have the thermal solar panels, which are controlled from this unit here. And the fluid from the uh, panels is fed in through the top into the pump and then into the special solar uh, domestic hot water tank. The water from the panels comes into the bottom, is recycled through a, a unit, comes out again and goes back up to the roof to be reheated. The water in the domestic hot water tank is then re is heated by that but also by the pellet boiler. The pellet boiler which is behind me um, also feeds the underfloor heating directly not the just the tank so there is a pump within the pellet boiler to feed the manifold for the um, the valves our nine kilowatt boiler has a simple hopper system uh, which we have the 20 kilogram bags which we simply feed into the boiler when we need it during a very cold winter, um, we use possibly the maximum of one uh, 20 kilogram bag a day, uh, but that's through the hardest of the Scottish winters. So we feel this is a really efficient system. Inside the house, we also have a smart energy meter. And this particular one links in uh, wirelessly to the main circuit board. Um, and it gives us an instantaneous reading of what we are using power wise um, in the house at that particular time uh, it's really important to know what you're using uh, we didn't when we first moved in we found that the plasma tv we had from the old house was using 500 watts as opposed to the lcd screen we have now which is about 100 watts that difference over a period of hours can make a big difference to the amount of power you're having to produce just to watch TV. Uh, so these things are really useful, uh, they give you an idea of what you're using. The Energy Savings Trust and the Green Homes Network um, is also a valuable source of information, not only for these, but also for finding other people who are willing to talk to you about any technology that you are thinking about installing yourself. Uh, solar PV, solar thermal, uh, pellet boilers, whatever. Um, there are people on their network that are willing to speak to anybody to give you their good and bad experiences. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a valuable source of information for anybody looking to go the same route that we've gone.